Hello, welcome back to another episode of Nicole Vignola Show. Today, we're going to be talking about why you can't let go, even though it wasn't love. You are mistaking it for real love. And the reason you've done that is because somewhere along the line, the narrative for love has been that it equals pain. We have been mistaking pain for love. And here's the thing, it isn't love. It's a need for reciprocation. You didn't love them. You just wanted them to want you. You wanted them to validate you. You wanted them to give you reciprocation and you mistook that for love. But here's the thing, there's not a single body of research that shows that love activates pain centers in our brain. Love activates the ventral tegmental area. Pathways are reward and feeling good. It also activates the limbic areas that are responsible for making us feel happy and joy and profound senses of awe. Not a single body of research shows that when we love somebody, it activates pain. The reason you can't let go is because we as humans are curious. We want to know what happens. We want to get the ending that we wanted. We have a prediction machine that essentially built this entire forecast of how something was supposed to go. And when it doesn't go away, is a huge discrepancy in that error detection center. So we have a part of the brain called the anterior cingulate cortex responsible for picking up on errors. We projected this particular future, which probably was skewed and biased because we were making ourselves believe that we wanted something to be the way that we wanted it to be, not the way that it actually was. You know, when those rose-tinted glasses go and the infatuation kind of wears off, we start to realize that actually it probably wouldn't have worked out anyway. And it probably wasn't something you wanted either. But the problem is, is that that anterior cingulate cortex responsible for detecting errors is supposed to tell you what you can do different in the future so that you don't repeat the same mistakes. But here's the thing, we tend to ruminate. Why? Because heartbreak, pain, social rejection simultaneously activates our part of the brain that is responsible for autobiographical memories. So we start to go down memory lane. Coupled with this error detection area, we start to ruminate on what we could have done differently in the past. But you know, as well as I know, that we cannot change the past, right? We can only change the future. And so that is your first tool. Tool number one is instead of trying to change the past, thinking, oh, if only I hadn't said those things, if only I didn't text them three times in a row, if only, if only, if only, then I would be here. Then things would be like this. Instead of wasting all of that mental currency, worrying about what you could have done differently, channel that mental currency, all those thoughts, into what it is that you want for yourself in the future. What are your non-negotiables? How do you want the future to go? I don't want to have to date somebody that I can't triple text because I think, oh, I might scare them away. I want to date somebody that if I need to text them three times in a row for whatever reason, it's not even a thing that I think about. And you should be thinking the same way too. Of course, there's a limit to that statement. If you're somebody that texts somebody 12 times in a row every single time and you have an anxious attachment, that is a different story. Of course, we need to gain agency over our behaviors and our actions and not lean all of our problems onto our partners. But you know what I'm getting at here, right? We shouldn't have to second guess every single little thing. And so to snap yourself out of that ruminative thinking, I could have done things differently, use that energy to understand what it is you want for yourself in the future and a future partner. Now, the second thing is that dopamine, oh, dopamine is the molecule of wanting more. It motivates you. It drives you to gain the information about somebody, especially when you don't know them. When we don't know somebody, things are exciting because the brain wants to find out. It wants to fill in the blanks. You have made a prediction. It wants to know if you're right or wrong. And so it keeps us motivated to try and pursue the person. But it's not love, it's validation. And so when they reject us, we think, but I love you. You don't, you wanted validation, you wanted reciprocation because love, love is a thing where people come together. It's a, it's a vessel where two people come together at the same time and decide to walk into love together. When it's this kind of dramatic, I love you, no, you don't. Oh, please have me, please take me back. Please, blah, 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 pain, pain, pain. That is not love, my friends. That is a deep need for validation. It is the basis of the human psyche. We need to be wanted. It's how we operate. We need to know that there's reciprocation. And when we don't have that, we start to lean in more. We start to want more information from them. So the reason you're struggling to get over them is because you've created this obsessive dopaminergic behavior 
around wanting more from them, wanting to seek more information from them. You're better off channeling that dopamine into something constructive like emotional expression. I talk about it extensively in Rewire and I'm actually talking about it in Mental Currency as well. Using your abilities to create is an art form that we are losing as humans. We start to believe that if we're not creatives, then we are not creative. You are creative. We are all creative. Making a sandwich in the morning is creating. May not necessarily be, you know, out of the world creative, but you're creating something. Using your hands to create something has a mind-body connection that actually helps you to feel better, ruminate less. It simultaneously activates the limbic areas of our brain in a way that then dampens the communication that is overthinking over ruminative pick up painting pick up drawing pick up dancing pick up clay making pick up i don't know make a puzzle take up a new hobby channel that dopaminergic drive into something that is more constructive because you did not love them you just wanted them to validate you guys please like comment and subscribe there are so many people who need these videos there are so many people struggling with heartbreak that don't realize all of these things and once you start to understand what is going on in the brain you see that penny drop people go ah so it's not me i'm not crazy i don't have an obsession i don't have an infatuation it's just that my brain has been programmed to repeat the same pattern but you can break it so please send this to a friend please like comment and subscribe